That's the only, you know, I just want to be sure that for all the checks that we write should come out of the general fund. Is that not correct, or am I wrong about that? <coughs> Judge, how yes, does that work when funds are collected uh, to the court? It's collected into the municipal fund. Your yes, taxes and, it, and everything are paid out. It, it has its own check. The state's paid out of that for their portion, but then how are they dispersed from that? The, uh, so much goes into uh, the tech, so much goes into building security, uh, the officers um, for arrest, and uh, um, they get a certain amount of it. And then the rest is just kept within the city to be yep. used. I don't, I don't approve any. I mean, it goes into, it's deposited, it's up to the mayor. But my point is, what I'm trying to say here is that money that the city spends should come out of the general fund. If it is for um, technology, then money from that technology fund needs to be transferred. No, ma'am. And then the check written. No, 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 no. Then how do no. we keep track of the checks? Should we not be looking at other check registers to approve them? I mean, why are we that, only doing the general fund? Let's ask the judge because she knows the disbursement uh, procedure. Courthouse Security and Technology has to have its own separate account and has to be accountable through that separate account. Okay. It does not come out of general. It should not come out of general at all. That's the court's money? Yeah. Well, it's the it's it's designated and it can only be sent, spent on certain funds. So is the police department's funds, does that, is that something that's, that that's the general right. fund that's, should not have anything to do with? It goes to the uh, police department's account. It's the warrants that served. There's a fifty dollar fee that can be dispersed, and then if another county asks for that, then it has to get dispersed to that county. But if they don't, then it stays within the. Uh, well, I guess what I'm asking is, from let's say ticket fines or whatever the income is coming from, it goes to. I'm going to say you being the court. Um, then you disperse it to the different funds that it needs to go to? I, I inform uh, Angela. I give her a report every month showing her what goes to what. Okay, and so then the police department is one of those categories? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and out of that, they pay for their vehicles and what have you? Is that well, what? I'm not sure what they, I mean, I just, I just tell, I give Angela a report every month. Every three months, I give her what is due uh, to, the, uh, to the state. It was a lot, it, if it went into general revenue and it got spent somewhere else, then you may come up with $11,000 it goes to the state that you don't, that you collected, but it's already been dispersed somewhere else. This way it's kept completely separate. The city knows what's there. And okay. Well, um, I'll wait and see what the mayor gives me and then we'll maybe review that again in the next council meeting. I'd like to accept I motion. Motion to say we accept the check the rest. Any questions, 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 all in favor? Three one in. All right, what we got next? Ah, addressing the concerned citizens. Well, I'm not really gonna do that. I'm really not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I explained that last time, and I'm not going to repeat myself. But I will tell you, uh, since it's my little time right there, I will tell you that on January 25th, Southwest Water Monarchs will be here to register seats, register the citizens that need the assistance with the H2O program. And what that is is. The, 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 the water rate is shot up, and if you meet a certain criteria, they can give you assistance. I'm gonna be there too. So, you know, it, it don't hurt to come, and they, they're trying to do their best. I know the young lady that put this plan together, her name is Jonas Hayes. She's also been instrumental in that, uh, and a lot of stuff that they can unveil when more is done. She was there for the Christian concert. Monarch had a big tent set up, you know. You can't blame a person who they work for. But she's the one that got all water from Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's her. That they didn't supposed to do it one time or something. Yeah, she she she's donated. I don't know how much water. I mean, I've seen my bill go up. It's almost double. And I will speak on it right there, except for this is not the proper form. But 
We do have people in uh, Austin fighting for us. Matter of fact, I think it's a freeze right about now on it. They can't go up, but hell, mine went up, it didn't come down. So, I don't know. So, anyway, if, if, would y'all pass the word? Can you put this in your newspaper too? And she'll be here? I will. Okay. Yeah, and she's going to be set up here, what, the majority of the day? Yes, and Anna said that they would run in the Frankston paper. Yeah. Okay, she's got from 11 to 7. So, and especially, you know, and I'm not trying to embarrass anybody if you're low income, you know, this will help you. So, that's, that's going to be that. All right. No need for discussion or anything else. I think that's a good move on Jan's part. Although I just paid that bill and boy here. Club at night. Club at night. Now, I can't get out because I don't have to fly it with me. Club at night is open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. Thursday is a pretty decent night. Friday is more of a, well, I'm looking around, youngsters night. I can say that in front of y'all. <laughs> Friday is more of a youngsters night, and Saturday is kind of, I think it's country and western. But for those of you who haven't been in there, it is a very nice club. It has a nice setup in there. It looks very nice. It, 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 they, 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 they've done a lot of work in there. So if you get a chance, go by. The co-owner's name is Mike Edwards. He's a good guy. Uh, diversity. They have diverse music for Saturday. Let's put it like that. A little of this, a little of that. And for those of you who think you can shoot pool, they got three pool tables in there. They got two or three big flat screen TVs in there. So give them a chance. From what they want it to be to what we told them they were going to be is totally different. So give them a chance, you get a chance. That's all I know about Club at Night. I think it's going to help our community out a little bit, though. All right, what's the next item? We received a taxation revenue off of their grants and everything, right? I mean, like, in a certain percentage. I don't know. <coughs> I don't check on that. Yeah. I had work Friday. We do? Yeah, there's a, there's a base tax, and then each deal is also in the tax deal now. Good. <laughs> I can't say this. Easy, easy, I've been there. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so. All right, let, let me see, make sure I got my memory right. Help me if I'm wrong. Item number 12, annexation, 155 South and Broadwood Bay. I think we did this the last time. With the people from Broadwood Bay, please stand. Thank you. And welcome to Coffee City. Thank we did this last month, but I'm gonna welcome you again. I can't welcome you enough. Welcome to Coffee City. This annexation proved that you are now a part of Coffee City, contrary to popular belief in this room. And I got to pay work from the Department of Justice to prove it. So thank you and welcome. Hey, and that big bridge went real well too. All right, consider the act upon speed limit ordinance. Where did that go in? All right, uh, everybody got a chance to look at the speed limit ordinance. And all that is is keeping our speed limit where it's set, where it's, where it's been. Because if you notice, textile just went through here with a fine tooth comb and trimmed some of these speed limits, speed stuff. And by passing this, it gives us the, uh, how does that work, Fauci? We'll be able to maintain the speed limit of 55 through here through the business corridor and everything. Right. We're also going to have to visit 3506, that speed limit. But if you looked at Dogwood, they've bumped it to 55. Frankston is 55 all the way almost to Bacon Chevrolet right. now. Had we not already acted on it, but we got to act again. Right. So, what's your recommendation? I'm not sure we accept the order. I second that. The motion is second that we accept the ordinance again. Any other questions? Questions? All in favor? Yes. Unanimous Amazon. Discuss ordinance workshop issue. Mayor, before yeah. you move forward, I, I said 3506. Um, they're doing the warrant and planning study on that now. They've got people out there counting and for 3506, just to let y'all know what's coming. Go to 
you know. Get it going. Hey, Chris. Sir. That speed limit, isn't it already 55? Oh, oh. 60. 60. It is 60. Well, <clears throat> now, since that has been uh, approved for 55, don't they don't they reduce that speed to accommodate that speed? That's that's one of the things we're looking at. I'm going to let you know that study's not complete. That's why we don't have the stuff for y'all. As soon as they get their study finished, we'll give it to y'all. All right. Thank you, Fire Chief. All right. <coughs> number 14, discuss ordinance workshop. Well, we've already had an ordinance workshop, even though I guess, well, <coughs> Spell Bruce, but I think the Herbert is H E R B E R T. I'm close enough. Yeah. Okay. okay, let me explain what happened because it's for those of you that wasn't there. Steve, where you at? They uh, shot your ordinances down. And. Uh, I told you some ideas from that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but they did come up with some ideas. They came up with about 10 ideas for different type of ordinances. And so. They decided to, uh, Bruce said, he wanted to know if he wanted to, if he could be the head of the new committee to do the ordinance. But you're more than welcome to be on the committee if you want to. Uh, that's fine. I've got a statement I'd like to read about that, if that's acceptable. Go for it. All right. Uh, City Council of Coffee City. And this is just from the information I read from the newspaper. Uh, workshops are intended for the discussion and eventual agreement on what is acceptable to present, be presented to the council. It is a starting point and not the final draft of what the city will be best served with. From the article in the Frankston Citizen, I believe that Alderman Ferris and Graham were well prepared to participate in the workshop, but Alderman Dross and Alderman refused to even begin the process, stating that there were many things that the citizens of Coffee City would not like to enforce or regulate. The editorial in the Frankston Citizen also encourages a less is better approach to this process. So as it stands now, we must be the best place to live in Texas unless you are a stripper. Have, Mrs. have Ms. Drost and Mr. Autoshan done anything about presenting suggestions, apparently they have, uh, as to the content of an ordinance package other than saying no to the suggestion we start with what has been used in Fluberville? I never intended for these ordinances to be a rubber stamp for the city, as people have accused me of doing, but to suggest that Flint or Holder has something better is no different than what I have offered as a starting point for discussion, especially when the city of Pflugerville is being used as a red herring to divert the discussion from its intended purpose, which is to provide a safe, clean environment for the people of Coffee City, and for our citizens to feel that the investment in their homes will be protected. You have a responsibility as aldermen to provide guidance and leadership to the people you represent. Uh, I, I believe that it, it could have been a little bit different. Um, I don't know who Mr. Herbert is. Um, Bruce Herbert, he's on the economic development. He is the cashier for the uh, treasurer for the economic development. Okay, so. Um, but what, did you what want of, to do that? I mean, this is, I mean, I, I don't have the authority to appoint whoever's going to be over that. I mean, the mayor Steve would Bruce. probably be the one to appoint. But if you would well, like to be over that, I'm sure Bruce wouldn't mind. He was just offering because he was one of the few people here for that discussion. And, and, and the other thing about this, Steve, we didn't per se shoot that down as saying we don't want ordinances. We want ordinances that fit our community, and we didn't feel like we needed to blanket the city with uh, unnecessary ordinances. We want to we want the ordinances to grow with the city, and of course, we're not going to establish an ordinance once an offense has occurred. But we we can see the horizon uh, close enough to where we can establish the ordinance to deal with what's coming on the horizon, rather than to take. Uh, Fugerville or any other uh, 
a city and, and, and just say, this is ours and we're going to change a few words here and this is it. And we, what we understood, John said, he said that this was, was, uh, uh, it, this was a general ordinance of a city that was much larger than ours and we could pick and choose and change. But uh, I just don't see the point in just uh, going to seed on ordinances right now when we can see, if, like for instance, if, if it becomes offensive for firecrackers uh, in front of a business or, a, or, or anything like that, well then, I, I don't see why we couldn't stop that because that's not, a, that's not something to where it would be grandfathered in. Many cities stop uh, fireworks. Uh, Houston stopped them for a dry spell, but then they allowed fireworks in Houston. Tyler doesn't even allow fireworks. And at one time, they, they could have fireworks. So I don't think that that, I, I think that we can see uh, a, a potential offense against our city far enough out to where we could create an ordinance to stop it. But I, I, didn't, I don't want you to think that your work was in vain in trying to present some ordinances because there is some ordinances needed here. And I don't get the idea that I just sat there and, and spanked your hand on that because that's not my intention. No. I just didn't want anybody to get the idea that we were going to take this barrage of ordinances and choke everybody here with it because everybody's got a different idea of how they want their city run. And, and what, you, I, you what I said... You to be the ones to do it. What I said was exactly what I just read you, that this was, these were ordinances that could be looked at and right. used. Right. There were all all kinds of different things. Right. I mean, you could select from anything you wanted, and right. as far as the notion that it was going to be jammed down somebody's throat, just because there were 36 pages of ordinances, not all of it was ordinances. Some of it described the actions, some of it described the fines, the penalties, and, and so, you know, everybody thinks it's this huge volume of ordinances, which it wasn't. But it sounds like you didn't take the time to really select what could be used. I read the you whole just, thing a dozen times. And and did you did you select anything at all out of there? Speaking of, we did it? actually come up with a list of yeah. six ordinances that we are going to work on. Uh, what I had an objection to was that those were given to us at a meeting, at a council meeting, and uh, consider and act upon these ordinances. Well. There, no. there was never time that, to look at those. That, that not only never, that, but I don't feel that you um, looked and read them yourself because there were so many of them that don't even pertain to our city. Now, I understand where you're coming from that maybe, let's use the sidewalks for just an example. Maybe we could look at parts of that for the fine and whatever. But um, to me, those or there were so many of them in there that it gave the impression that that is what you were after. That, and that's so the whole point it was, of what we were told, was. We were told that it just to be used as a template. Well, we are, we will use them as a template. We will look back over them. We are going to have more meetings, and we are going to be working on six to begin with. We feel like we can't do how many was in that 26 or whatever it was. I don't know that, that number. That wasn't my out. intention. But we and, are and going so to start working that's, on that. That's why I want the perception here to be understood. It was not my intention that all of these were going to be used for this city. My intention was to present a package that you could work with and work from. And so when you keep saying that you know the size of Pflugerville is not what we're looking for, I understand that. But they have taken a lot of time and a lot of expense and gone through a lot of issues to get to their ordinance package, which gives you an opportunity to pick what you want. Nobody ever said you were going to use every single one. There wasn't but at least, much in there, really. I'm, I'm sorry. Steve, but, what, okay. what, well, I, what I don't think we're grasping is that the English language is used to construct that. The verbiage, the construction of those ordinances, that languaging aspect was done by attorneys. This little town cannot afford to go by attorneys to construct our ordinances. What I understood and what you and I have discussed is that the languaging issue there could be used to construct our ordinances from by plagiarizing what they've done. In some of the issues that we've decided we're going to discuss, one is animal control, one is firearm discharge within the boundaries of the city, fencing, 
in nuisance overviews and such things as the Wakemans have suggested the bother of an airboat with lights on it at night around their home. And some of the other things that we discussed was bridge fishing and building uh, condemnation rules that you may use for abandoned buildings that's become dilapidated and become an eyesore to our community. And then uh, that was that was one we formerly talked about possibly narrowing our focus to. We would like to create a citizens group to help us construct these ordinances in order that all of us benefit from them. I understand what you're trying to say, Steve. The English language is used in a way that the attorneys have prepared that we cannot afford to pay to have prepared. So if we construct ours using their languaging, then it makes it not only cheaper and simpler, but more focused as to what we want to do here in these various things I've listed here to you and still be able to use some of the, the documentation that you provided to us. And that's what I would like to meld together to see if we can get this done. And I would like to set a timetable to make these things happen so this just doesn't languish on and on and on and doesn't ever actually come to fruitation. So we have Bruce that's come forward. You have already contributed. Your community, I'd like to see a little more representation of your community being involved with what we do here in city government because y'all are very much a large part of our population now. So Steve, if you would, consider some of your people are there in your community that we brought in through Briarwood Bay annexation, and we'll find others in our portion of the Coffee City proper, and then maybe we can meld together something that we can work with in order to develop these ordinances on a on a basis of, of, of action that can be looked forward to. I don't I want to set timetables. I'm going to be heading this. And we're going to start on the first two being animal and firearm. And then we construct that, we move forward, and get that voted, present to the Coffee City Council, then vote on it, get it behind us. Then the next two would be fence and nuisance overview. And then the last two would be bridge fishing and building condemnation. And there's one other one I would like to interject if we are able to do it, is website monitoring and, and licensing within our city. We have some issues with some websites that's very scurly us or very uh, detrimental to our city's image. We want to do something about that. Okay, well, I'd, I'd like to say I, I appreciate that. I, I, I was misinformed by the newspaper. It seemed like you guys didn't do anything. It seemed like, uh, like, like it was an absolute fiasco. And that, because I didn't attend it, you know, I, I, I took the word of the newspaper that that's what happened. And, and it, it mentioned very briefly that you had looked at things like that, but I didn't know that you actually made as much, as much effort as you did. I know the so paper, I, I apologize. I know the paper had an editorial about least government better, but I think our editor lives in the city, he has a few ordinances to make his environment better and safer for him. So I well, think we should apply some of that to our own city. Well, I think we're all able to read it. Uh, the paper and discern what was said or not said um, and I guess everybody takes their own interpretation away from that um, so we're all entitled to that. Steve, let me just say this. Uh, this is how I look at it. In a city our size, uh, if you read the paper or if you look at the court docket and you look at whatever type of nuisance or, 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 or things that you would consider needed an ordinance for. There's very little at this point. The things such as I know that you've had trouble with in the past was uh, was being able to uh, get a judgment on uh, nuisance uh, things that were against maybe your bylaws or restrictions. And I'm not so sure, and we discussed this last week, I'm not so sure we couldn't take an existing ordinance, which is probably one of the few we have, the trash ordinance, and amend it, not even create another one, because we can have a numerous uh, uh, amendments to our trash ordinance to maybe address that. And then one of the questions, and I mean, we didn't just take this thing and throw it in the trash can. We, we looked at it. We, we even 
brought up the uh, idea that uh, you had uh, uh, restrictions and bylaws that would govern your community, and I even asked the question, because I don't know what the legal avenues are, are those items no longer in effect, and does the city ride herd on that? Did that, dis did that disable your bylaws and restrictions by being uh, brought into the city, or can yeah. you still use them uh, if, if, there's a law, if there's a law and an ordinance on the books, then that can be enforced because we are part of the city. If there's something that directly affects the uh, homeowners association, like collection of dues, um, or, or so like that architectural, that, that that state, stands. because that's part of our association. I, I'm Keeping glad to know that. Uh, but I'm saying in the last meeting, I also made the statement that uh, we could possibly amend the existing ordinance we have to benefit you in your situation because. Uh, you know, nobody likes trashy uh, yards and so forth, and I'm one to talk, but uh, <laughs> um, I, I just don't want them to be overbearing in ordinances, and I think that we need to establish ordinances on a as-needed basis. And I know we need ordinances. Mm -hmm. And, and that, I, that don't my want, point. I don't want somebody to throw me to the ground and step on my neck with ordinances. Someone suggested the other day, they said, well, what if we uh, said, well, we're allowed to discharge a firearm if we were shooting uh, 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 a Fire varmint team. or a snake Scott or something Clark. like that. Well, we, well, just, well, we're talking about ordinances. But, but for them, who's going to, see, the thing about it is, who's going to ride herd on that? Is, is, is the police department going to run out there and say, was that, was that a snake you shot or a skunk? And well, there's, there's you know, a difference see, between is, some of that. And that's, that, there's, there's ordinances see? for uh, a nuisance type activity of gunfire. But if you're, if you're shooting a rodent or you're shooting a snake or you're shooting something like that, that's not what this is intended to do. And that, you know, so if, if the point got taken It's real wrong, arbitrary and it'd be hard to enforce. Right. Well, if there's some there are, idiot next door to you, like Lee said last week, shooting an automatic weapon in his yard and you got 50 foot locks over there, let's have an ordinance. Well, that's, and that's exactly what some of this let's, needs, let's have an ordinance. needs to address. And but that, if that's a guy is out 50 acres or 20 acres or, and he shoots a copperhead snake in his yard, I don't want to be questioned about that. And I don't think people in Coffee City want to be bounced down with an you ordinance your, that is... That's, that's, what, that's what's happening here. You guys are making it look like this is what we needed to have done, and it's not. Well, I know I how our that own government got out of control, and I don't want to be like our government. I don't want to get out of control. Like I've, got a, I've got a question. That, uh, I've got a question. I would like to suggest that he attend one of the workshops. He didn't come to the workshop that we had. So I think he needs to attend a workshop and we continue these ordinances underneath the workshop agenda. Right. And I wish everybody would show up. I mean, just, I mean, and listen, I probably stepped way out of turn because Bruce told me he would like to head it if nobody else was. I would, I mean, you're representing basically, uh, as the head of the Homeowners Association over there, a, a much larger group, and I'm sure Bruce would understand that. He was just volunteering because Bruce is one heck of a citizen, and he was just saying, well, if nobody, you know, wants to be the head of it, he would be it. But, I, I mean, I could tell Bruce tonight, and I'm sure if he was here today, he'd say, oh, no, let this guy do it. I really don't want to do it. Well, yeah, there, yeah, there doesn't have to be a cheat. Okay, okay, okay. okay, 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 okay. Hey. Steve, would you like to be part of the, uh, of the artist mm -hmm. thing? Yes. Okay, we'll put you, you and Bruce down. Next thing. Lean and Greece entered Broward Bay December 17th. Well, it's already passed that. <laughs> For those of you that missed it, we had a great time. We handed out a lot of cups, coffee seed cups. We did a couple of uh, surveys. Uh, our new trash people, Allied Waste, cooked up some awesome links and dogs. I think there's still some left in there. I mean, they had so many. It was just wonderful the way people were pulling together. And we sat right there in the front of Broadway Bay. We had police cars and stuff with the little lights going right there in front of the, uh, before they pulled in and all that mm -hmm. stuff. I think it was an excellent move. I think it went excellent. And I think the folks from Broadway Bay, uh, 
really realized that we were welcoming them to Coffee City, and I thank the whole.